Right, hello. Um, I've now started on the the cylinder head, uh, doing some work on that, and uh, getting rid of the old valve, and um, hopefully going to be lapping in the new valve shortly. So I'll show you what I've done. This is the cylinder head. Um, I've taken off the rockers. I'm separating it all. There's inlet and exhaust and the rocker holder and basically the the rockers which would go on top of these valves they work together it's just um two valves rather than one just for um uh, capacity i suppose um so yeah uh, this is the offending valve as you can see i've got off um the spring and the collets and removed the valve stem, which is this. It's bent, which probably happened when it was hit by the valve itself, the valve face or head, um, which very thankfully I found, much to my relief, uh, it was where I thought it was. It was in the exhaust, so I had to take the exhaust off and just upturn it. And out popped that. As you can see, it is properly mashed up. This is a very hard bit of metal. Um, but yeah, it's got half the power of a of the motorbike really, or the whole power of the motorbike um, pushing it, pushing it up in the uh, combustion chamber. So yeah, it's obviously quite a complex bit of uh, engineering. It's a magnet. The valve head itself isn't magnetic, so had that fallen into the engine, I wouldn't have got it out with a magnet. The stem, the end of it there, isn't magnetic. But the uh, upper end of the stem is. So they're quite complex, these. As you can see, possibly, if I hold it to the light, this is hollow. It's hollow down to about there because it's sodium filled um, which I'm not really sure about I thought that was only really a consideration for very fast moving valves weight saving etc on very high performance engines which this isn't so I don't know I can't help thinking there's a little bit of over engineering and unnecessary complication going into the manufacture of that valve did it you know it did that give it a weak point i don't know but um we are where we are and that is where we are so i've got a new valve i got that from uh motor works 42 quid it hasn't been cleaned thankfully um so it's basically as it was taken out of the engine from this breakers it's straight, uh, it's undamaged, it all looks very good. The seating surface there behind looks very good. So I'm going to do very, very little to this, if anything, apart from obviously lap it in. Uh, and I'm umming and ahhing about what to do with the other valves. I may just leave it. Let me show you that now. Right, apart from taking the valve out, the valve stem from here, this is untouched. There's a lot of dinking, there's obviously, a, the, 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 most of the damage is scoring, quite heavy scoring is, is right here, where you'd sort of expect it to be, taking gravity into, into consideration. But if you have a look at this, I think I got away very, very lightly. Obviously this valve broke for whatever reason, it was rattling around in here, for a period of time and then it was eventually pushed out of here and out into the exhaust during the time it was in here rattling around it obviously destroyed both the spark plugs and caused you know a, a bit of damage here and obviously to the piston behind it but thankfully no damage to the cylinder walls cylinder uh, itself and these valves would have been in operation and the remaining one 
during the time that this was rattling around inside. But if you have a look, there is no damage whatsoever, no scoring, no nothing to either any of these remaining valves or this bedding face here. Obviously, if it had put a big gouge into that, this valve would never seat properly. So, uh, looking at it and having a, a bit of a sort of a appreciation on this, I've got away very lightly. When I, when I think about what could have happened, I think I've got very lucky there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a further little play with this and basically decide what I'm going to do, whether I am going to remove these and reseat them or not. Uh, we shall see. Right, there we go. That's the piston out. And as you can see, it's badly scored up and dinked all around it, all over the, the face, but obviously badly damaged. That would have been in the piston, like in the cylinder like that. Obviously the lower part, smashing that valve into the head. Very thin, small, sort of pucky cylinders. I've got this one here, which is a, a new, brand new cylinder for my uh, H100, which is more of a standard looking piston. Sorry, I keep saying cylinder. That's more of a standard looking piston, I would, I would say. That's what I expect to see when I think of a piston. But yeah, like I say, very small and pucky. Um, there is, it came out very easily, this. Um, a circlip each side. And this is nice and smooth. It's going to be replaced anyway. You can see it's dented, the inside. The faces are generally quite thin. On pistons, they're not as thick as you sort of imagine they they'd be. But uh, yeah, this is getting replaced. I did order one piston, but the um, supplier got back to me, and he couldn't find it. This sort of breakers, so I've ordered a set of two from the same place. I got a bit of a discount, so I've now got left and right side pistons. Uh, so I'm going to do the right side of this bike anyway. The head. I'll have a look at the piston. I don't expect it to be bad, but I may change it. I've got the option, but uh, but yeah, got to wait. Yeah, roughed up. That's basically just um, you know, a souvenir, stroke memento, stroke paperweight, stroke reminder of uh, bad times. Now that will be replaced. Right. Um, I was considering being lazy and not touching the other three valves. Um, so I just thought I'd, I carried out a quick test. I got some lighter fluid and I squirted it because all these valves are supposed to be closed now, remember? There's obviously no rockers on anyway, so they are as closed as they're ever going to be. I squirted some um, lighter fluid in through the, uh, through the inlet side so it would sit on the back of the valves bang it just came straight through so they're not seating very well i haven't even bothered trying the exhaust so i will be relapping all the valves <sighs> oh dear i think i may have uh, spoken too soon about getting lucky with this head i've just removed one of the um, inlet valves have a look at this Right, this is one of the inlet valves I've just taken out. You can see it is bent. You can't really see when it's when it's sat in the head. But that is bent and there ain't no unbending it. So that is a new one of them at least. I'm going to take off the other one now. Right, I think I've got lucky with the upper inlet valve. I put it very light, I mean, just by eye, it looks all right. I've just put it very lightly in this drill. A 
And from what I can see, it looks OK. So I will try that one. I'll lap it in when it comes to it. I'm obviously going to have to do some, some more part ordering, but I'll lap that one in, test it with lighter fluid, and just see if it, see if it um, holds. If it does, good stuff. I mean, it may have been knocked a couple of times, but it seems good to me, just by eye. So that's both the inlets out. It's time to take out the remaining exhaust valve and see what that's looking like. Right, that's all four valves out now. There you go. All four of them out. The final exhaust one, which is the upper of the two. Looks pretty good to me. So again that'll be that'll be lapped in. So basically yeah it was the not surprisingly the two lower valves, one inlet obviously and the exhaust one that broke. This is how this is the bottom of the engine this is the top obviously that's all the damage there that's the valve that broke that's the one that's bent so those two uh, obviously i've got one i'm now going to need to order the rear inlet valve right um i now know the full situation with the valves and i'm going to have to order a inlet valve um yeah when you read the haynes manual um, and look online when you're doing this kind of work. For this bike anyway, um, they talk about matched uh, pistons, or, you know, uh, yeah, matched pistons, and uh, piston and cylinder pairs. With this bike, this is the cylinder, this. There's no sleeve, a separate sleeve that you can fit in, or anything like that, that is the cylinder. So I suppose if you, you know, if you were to look at this literally, instead of replacing one cylinder, one piston, as I'm hoping to do, I'd have to get matched pistons and cylinders. I mean, can you imagine the cost of that? Um, from BMW, new, it would be excruciating. I mean, the, the pistons are 260 quid each. So that's over 500 quid for the pistons. I imagine the cylinders are well over 500 quid each. So um, it would be utterly uneconomical and impractical to do that. Um, obviously for this job I've had a broken valve which has caused an another damaged valve and a piston and various other bits of damage that I can get away with. Um, but yeah, so I think you've got to take certain things with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Certainly on a 15-year-old bike like this, um, I'm basically just trying to repair it as best I can. It's never going to be as good as new, but it should be good enough. I'm hoping that you won't notice any, any, any difference. Um, with this, I've just done a bit of a sort of light clean-up, uh, more noticeable, if you like, on the other side. Very light. I've got, um, I've got rid of the worst. I basically just got off any of the these this is the exhaust side this is where you get the um the build up of carbon and stuff like that the inlet side is reasonably clean but i've just gone over it with a very lightly with a wire brush um just to basically clean it out um so that's pretty much ready now uh ready for lapping i've blown it out with air um, it'll get a, I've got to clean up the gasket face um, a little bit better later, but that is pretty much ready. Uh, I'm now just waiting on the parts really, and then I can lap in new valves, and that will be that cylinder head done and ready to go back on.